Hi everybody, it's Wes Hagen, and we're here at uh, Club Pepe Vineyards and Club Pepe Estate Wines, where I'm the winemaker and vineyard manager. It is Monday, and it is uh, April 7th, 2014, and we've had a great year so far. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the history of the Santa Rita Hills. So you can sort of see behind me, you can see the Santa Rita Hills, and the Santa Rita Hills are the central geographic feature of our American viticultural area. Sort of like, uh, sort of like the spine in a long east-west valley that runs all the way to the Pacific Ocean and keeps us cool with wind and fog. But east-west valleys don't really occur in nature very often, so how did this east-west valley form? Well, 12 million years ago, we were 200, 300 feet underwater here, and then we were forced above water during a tectonic event where the Pacific Plate knocked into the North American Plate during the Miocene era and caused this seabed to rise above, above the ocean and basically become dry land. And then over the last 12 million years, it's slowly eroded and become alluvial, and things have started to grow here. So we have very young, very poor soil, doesn't have a lot of nutrients, so the vines grow very small. And then on top of it, we get the wind off the Pacific Ocean down these east-west valleys. But these mountain ranges were actually formed in a north-south orientation, and then the Pacific Plate slipped under the North American Plate, knocked this entire peninsula into an autochthonous or in a semi-autochthonous form, which is a fancy, big, long word that just means it's a free-floating cookie of land sort of above the tectonic plates being sort of uh, influenced by them, but not attached to either. So we're on a very erosive part of California, and one of the miracles of this place is it's really very transitory. It used to be underwater, it will be underwater again. That little blip of geologic time, we have the chance to coax great Pinot Noir and Chardonnay out of this region. Let me show you the soil, and uh, then I'll show you how these mountain ranges really influence the way we grow wine here. Now you can see here, and I will try to get as close to this rock as I can without stopping the video. This is a piece of our soil that you can really see a lot of the little kind of pieces of uh, fossil material, which are basically a bunch of diatomaceous earth that got together and basically are diatoms that uh, floated to the bottom of the ocean and formed, uh, formed a lot of these um, deposits that give us lots of calcium in our soil. So when we look at the grapevine, we look at the soil. Obviously the soil is very sandy. Uh, sandy loam is the way that it would be described. Because the soil is so sandy and it's only a 15 million year old seabed soil, basically our vines grow very, very uh, with low, low vigor. So small vines, small clusters, small berries, but then the berries have rather thick skins by virtue of how much exchangeable calcium is in the soil, thanks to those marine deposits. So we have one of the longest, coolest growing seasons anywhere where Pinot Noir is produced. On top of that, we have the smallest, some of the lowest vigor of any Pinot Noir region. And as a result, we have the smallest, lightest clusters. Uh, and the clusters can weigh, you know, less than, an, uh, between an ounce and two ounces. So sometimes we need literally seven to eight clusters to make one pound of fruit, as opposed to a cluster of Cabernet Sauvignon, which may weigh, you know, a pound or a pound and a half. So you can see just how tiny these little clusters are. And the cluster architecture won't get much bigger than that. Of course, the berries will get larger, they'll shed their caps and they'll flower, and the berries will get bigger, but really, these clusters are absolutely tiny. So because we have the uh, cool climate, because we have the winds and the fog, because we have poor soil, because we have lots of calcium, all those things sort of combine to give the Santa Rita Hills the capacity to grow tiny clusters, tiny berries with a lot of intensity and color. So if people come down here and kind of hate on us, usually from Oregon, saying how much Pinot, how much Syrah are you putting in your Pinot to get color like that, I understand why they're jealous, but there is a really a built-in concentration in muscle to Santa Rita Hills, which doesn't mean you have to make the biggest, baddest, darkest, richest, high alcohol Pinot Noir for Monsieur Parker to make him happy. You can also make wines that have strength more like a ballerina, that are elegant and also have a little bit of that wonderful full concentration and flavor without letting the uh, wines go completely off um you know, off the chart on alcohol. I don't think there's a right way to make Pinot or a wrong way to make Pinot. I just think that the Santa Rita Hills offers us as many stylistic opportunities as we're willing uh, to, to coax out of it. So again, these are the, the uh, Parisma Hills. And the Parisma Hills are to the north of Clopepe. Off here we have the Santa Rita Hills, the central geographic feature of the AVA. And then, so there, and then you can see Tularosa Road is sort of, uh, Tularosa Hill is over there. And the wind comes off that hill through this valley and just comes ripping through to keep us cool almost every day. And then off in the distance, 
you can see the Santa Rosa Hills. So between the Santa Ritas and the Santa Rosas is the southern valley, uh, east, southern east-west valley of the Santa Rita Hills. And uh, that's, of course, over that hill is where San Fernand Benedict, over this hill is where Sea Smoke is. And then, of course, we have Kessler Hawk next door, Clopepe in front of us. Uh, you know, uh, Foley and a number of other wineries uh, on 246 to the east of us. So this is pretty much the Santa Rita Hills, a unique sort of east-west transverse maritime throat that was uh, basically formed by massive tectonic shifts. Uh, it is a miracle of geology and a miracle of geography. Take-home message is everything about it concentrates uh, the fruit, shrinks the vine, lowers the vigor, makes the clusters tiny, the berries tiny, and the skins thick, which gives us the opportunity to really make uh, some of the most expressive Pinot Noirs on the planet. If you have any questions about the San Rita Hills, please leave them in the comments. Other than that, I hope you learned something. I hope you uh, enjoyed your little uh, introduction to the uh, crazy um, mineral-laden soils of the San Rita Hills. This is Tierra, or excuse me, this is Elder Sandy Loam Soil at Clopepe. And uh, I hope you guys have an awesome week. Remember, this weekend coming up, uh, Thursday night, we're having a dinner at Industrial Eats in Buellton for the Santa, Rita, or Santa Barbara County Spring, week, uh, spring Weekend, a uh, big wine festival. And uh, other than that, we're, uh, we're looking forward to seeing you guys all at the Spring Weekend. Uh, we're doing seminars on Friday, Grand Tasting on Saturday, and then a Clopepe Open House Sunday, 11 to 3, 1273 West Laurel. And that's as clearly and uh, purely commercial as I'll get. Have a great day, guys. Talk to you soon.